Right, I'm going to move on to the graphing question. Let me first tell you where we were looking for marks. Three features that we were particularly hunting for. Number one, and I've literally put this in order of how I graphed it. Like this is my graph, yeah? This is me graphing. The way I thought about it was, okay, we've talked about graphing before. You think about easy things before you think about hard things. The easiest things you can do when your um, function is to square a given function, actually this is often in regardless of squaring or reciprocal or whatever, look for your zeros and your ones, right? Because the square of zero is zero and the square of one is one, okay? You also know the square of negative one, uh, I didn't. I didn't really pay attention for that too much, but you you could. You can see my um. You can see my diagram over here. You see those marks that I've got there. I know that negative one has to be roughly here because I know where one is, and then I can roughly do that. Uh, I wasn't particularly um, paying attention to it in this case, but you can. There's no reason why you can't. <clears throat> the important points, therefore, one, two, three, four. You really had to nail those, and most people did. That's good. But then they started to fall down and we had a look at the next thing. Horizontal asymptotes. Okay, you've got the x equals, sorry, the y equals zero um, behaving on the left-hand side of the graph. A lot of people missed that it was going to be y equals four. And they just forgot, oh, I actually know the value. It's going to be two, so it's going to be four. Okay, and that had to be, I mean, the graph only just gave you enough space to get to four, but if it was in the right ballpark, we could see that. Okay. Um, the horizontal asymptotes, and then the curvature. Now you're squaring, right? You're squaring. So let me just get a little clutter off my diagram. You're squaring. Here's where all of the action is happening, okay? Now when you square something, it becomes a more extreme version of itself, right? And it's the same with raising to any power, right? So these parts of the graph here, the black is my original, and these parts are important because their ordinates, the y values are all below one, all below one. So when you square them, they get smaller. Make sense? So these parts really had to be underneath. I was looking for that. Obviously, you've got the exact reverse happening everywhere else, right? All these parts above here, you've got to be above because you're becoming a more extreme version of whatever value you are above one, okay? That was the last feature I was looking for. Part two, again, let me say the features and I will say them in the order of what was being drawn really okay easiest thing to see a discontinuity at x equals negative one the function to begin with doesn't exist so it's reciprocal can't exist either and that was an easy mark that i was surprised a lot of people just missed then you would get the horizontal asymptote now this okay this is a little sneaky more people identified the y equals four asymptote from before but if you know the asymptote here too you still know it's reciprocal right you really need to put that in. The rest of it was for um, curvature, and we were pretty lenient on that one. Because you don't know what this actual function is, it's, it's like a weird piecemeal thing. You can't be too accurate. For example, over here on the left-hand side, pretty much if you gave me any, sorry, that should say increasing. If you gave me any increasing function, it was okay. If it was straight, if it was concave, up instead of down, uh, it was all right, okay? That was the three marks. Okay, talk faster, Mr. Wu. Let's have a look at part B. All I'm going to talk about here is how I, how I knew that this shape has its particular concavity and how I know it's not this and it's not this. Um, just leave them on the desk here, thanks. Okay. The way I knew, the way I knew is firstly, once I have an idea of the domain and range, which I'm not gonna go into right now, I have a look at this derivative. I have a look at the derivative, right? Have a look, as I approach x equals zero, tell me what's happening to that derivative. As I approach x equals zero, that denominator is shrinking and shrinking. So the whole derivative is skyrocketing, right? It's approaching infinity. And that's why you've got um, that vertical sort of, you'd have a vertical tangent there, right? Um, you can use similar opposite logic for, for this guy over here, okay? So that's how you got that graph. There was just that one mark on the graph itself. Okay. When you got to this guy, um, you just need to remember, like, what do absolute values do? And really, you're just getting a whole bunch of copies here. Okay. 